Hello everybody, welcome to a sheepish look at Rise of the Tomb Raider, the PC version. My name is Gunnar, and today we're looking at the sequel to the 2013 Tomb Raider game. And uh, I know the first question that pops into your mind is, how good does the hair look? I can answer, it looks amazing. And uh, the rest of the game looks pretty good too. Um, although we're looking at the PC version, I'm actually playing with a controller. Uh, I know you can shout at me as much as you want. I played through the first, the, the first Tomb Raider reboot, the 2013 one, with the mouse and keyboard. And uh, the controls are basically the same in this one, although I do... Kind of, I don't know, I just prefer third-person platformers with the uh, controller. Um, but so far the PC port seems pretty good. My my computer isn't a monster machine, uh, but it's it's on high graphics. I'm getting almost always a 60 frames per second. Max Minimum I drop to is like a 50 frames. And uh, I'm also recording, which makes it even harder. Uh, but as you can see, the game looks absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the game will, you'll feel right at home basically if you've played the other one. It's got uh, the same controls, it's got the same crafting kind of stuff, although that's been built upon. And uh, the combat seems to be basically the same, but also again a bit better. Basically the entire game is just improved, which is pretty great. Uh, the first... Uh, okay, I'm gonna be... I don't know, should I use mouse controls or should I... I'm gonna stay with the keyboard because... I mean the controller because that's just how I am. This is about two hours into the game, by the way. The first 30 minutes to one hour is a bit slow, and not in the sense that it's slow as in... Uh, not fast paced, there's a lot of action and everything, but it's just kind of very linear and uh, almost quick timey, but it gets past that pretty quickly and uh, then you get into the fun. So you can see here you've got a skill system, again like in the first game, but it feels, I feel like there's a few more perks and stuff to choose from. Uh, for example, this one is more melee stuff, so uh, here it takes significantly less damage from explosions and fire, stuff like that. This one allows you to uh, get bow upgrades or uh, I think just ammo upgrades. And this last one, I've gotten these two because I like to level up quickly. I got, uh, where is it? There, I get more XP from different uh, collectibles, and this one here I have, I find challenge objects and stuff. You'll, I'll see all this, I'll show you this stuff very soon. As well as changing your weapons, you can also change your outfit in this game, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, let's see, we've got a leather jacket here. Uh, I think a few of these might be because I have some sort of special edition of the game because I pre ordered it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and some of them add a few bonuses, like this one, for example, reduces damage from Greek fire. But uh, I, I like this one. It start you start off with this one, and it's pretty cool. It's I like the red color, and you know, it just makes me feel right at home. Uh, but yeah, I like that option. You can also change your weapons here. Sorry, Lara, for making you <laughs> sit and then get back up. Uh, the cool thing about the crafting, I think in the first game, from what I remember, everything you just kind of made using scraps that you found, like scrap metal or whatever. Um, although here it's a bit less simplified, you actually have to gather different materials, you go to different weak branches and you break them off, or you get poisonous mushrooms to make poison arrows. And uh, so you can see here in the bottom right, let me show you with my mouse because we are on the PC right now. Uh, you can see here it costs 5 cloth, I have 11 in here, so I'm just gonna craft this, and there you go. So now I have, uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, decreases finger tension for additional hold time, there you go, so I can now hold the arrow a bit longer. I can also upgrade my climbing axe, which seems pretty cool. Let's get this mouse out of the way. Uh, so yeah, I use hide over there, you can see, and a bit of scrap, it seems. Let's see the legend over here. Yes, it is salvage. I'm sorry. And anyway, I'm gonna grab it because why not? Increased pry speed, that's pretty useful because I do pry things quite a bit. Anyway, let's get to the gameplay. You can also fast travel, by the way. I can fast travel to previous areas. As you can see, I'm only in the... Th Third, oh, actually, it's like there's another one off map as well. But yeah, I can go back and recomplete some places after I've gotten certain upgrades because I have some found some like cave entrances here which I can't access yet. I need some upgrades, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, this video, I'm probably gonna have to be quiet quite a few times, by the way, because there probably will be some dialogue and cutscenes. And uh, but the voice acting and animation and all that is superb as the last game as well, and it, it's just it's it's great. It's very immersive. I really like it. Uh, you do have this kind of survival instinct thing, or whatever it's called, I don't know. Lara Bat Spider Vision, uh, where you can kind of sense some things. I don't think it reveals everything, because there are some buried, um, hidden objects and all that, which you can reveal by finding other things or looking on the map and stuff like that. So, you know, and, and I don't know, it, it seems to be much more a Tomb Raider game than the previous one was, because uh, you explore a lot more caves and tombs, and I don't know, there's a lot more collectibles lying around and just more hidden stuff. Uh, the platforming feels, I think, basically the same. I mean, okay, again, I'm only two hours in, so I don't know if they're gonna add a few more things. War Galley. How the hell did it get down here? It's a very good question. Uh, I'm sure they, they'll probably add a few more tools and all that, but the platforming, you know, basically, at its basic format, it's basically the same, but it still feels very good. And uh, you kind of always have full control over it and everything. Oh man, that's... <laughs> How did that get here? 
I'd like to get to the stealth section because the stealth combat has actually improved quite a bit. You can also craft things on the way, by the way. Uh, I believe in the previous game you healed... I don't remember if you used med kits or bandages or whatever, or if you just healed within combat. By the way, the difficulties actually add quite a lot of variety, which is very nice. Um, the higher difficulties, for example, allow you to only heal outside combat, uh, as in... If you're not getting shot at, you'll slowly heal. The easier difficulty, you can heal as long as you're behind cover. And then also the later ones, you have higher AI, and uh, you can only heal with bandages and stuff like that. Oh, which way should I go? Okay, I have to go there, so let's take this. This is probably a secret place. And uh, I do like that you can actually craft on the go. <laughs> While running, you can actually hold the button. See, I can craft... Uh, I can craft poison arrows there and you can show you you can see the resources that I need on the right or I can craft normal arrows here Let's just craft some because actually I have 18. I don't need that. Let's craft poison arrows. Why not? So I can show them to you. I can also craft a uh, med kit, but right now it's not letting me I think I might be full or actually I think that's just because it heals you instantly. I have full health uh, I'm on the hard difficulty not the absolute hardest the one before that so that means I can only heal uh, outside combat normally as in like just waiting Ooh, optional challenge Must tomb. Be up there. But uh, yeah, I think I can heal with bandages anytime I want. That was <laughs> very close. I thought I missed that. That was awesome. You have gruesome deaths in this, by the way. Again, one of the one of the reasons you play the first game, right? Um, it's a very gruesome death. It's 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 lovely. It just makes you realize how much you suck, and you just killed someone. The Maria Dula is trapped. The ice gave way. Her spine snapped in two. I will skip these in the video. Uh, they are narrated normally and nicely, but it's just, you know, for time's sake. And also, you, you want to hear it when you buy the game, right? But look at that hair! Looks lovely. <laughs> Maybe a bit lighter than real life, but it still looks pretty great. I'm gonna grab these mushrooms. I do like this kind of, uh, I'm generally not a fan of survival games, but you have this kind of survival aspect in this when, when it comes to, like, just finding all sorts of different objects. Uh, I don't know if I want to go up there or if I want to go here. I like... It, the, the puzzles seem to be a bit better than the previous game as well, although I really enjoyed... I actually, I loved the previous game. Uh, so far this is... Quite, uh, going, going the right path. Alright, let's just mash this. <clears throat> okay... Yes! <laughs> uh... Alright, I'm gonna climb up, yeah. That's how, that's... Yeah, okay, we need to crack the ice. Thank you, Lara! For helping me out. Uh-huh. Let's, let's... Where do I... I don't... Alright, I think I get it. I think I need to climb up this and I'm gonna push that into the ice wall so that I then can climb. Oh man, this <laughs> I would not be going that fast if I were you, but hey, you are the pro explorer here. Whoa, okay, let's be careful. Ooh. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Very cinematic feel as always. Yes. I, really <laughs> I know I'm talking a lot, but if you get this, you'll obviously be much more immersed. Because uh, you don't have my silly voice talking over. Uh, should I should I go the other way? I, I want to explore. Okay, actually, this is an optional one. It even told me when I came in here. Cool, so we can get some extra loot or something. Oh god, this is probably gonna be a longer video than my usual sheepish look at, but it's all right. There's a lot to show. All right, so let's rotate this. I don't know why I'm rotating it, but I'm assuming it's probably part of the puzzle. Yes. Uh, we're going to we're gonna lower that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's coming back up. All right. We maybe have to prepare things in advance. Mm. This calls for timing. It does. I was thinking the same. Oh, okay, never mind. It keeps going. All right, all right. It's fine. It's not too hard. So let's turn the wheel. All right, go, go, go. <laughs> all right, going on. Uh. Well, <laughs> shit. Okay, I was really expecting to die, but the game was a bit merciful. <laughs> Putting this little platform here. All right, let's try this again. <clears throat> I'm gonna do on my first try. And wow, look at that! I am skilled, huh? I should be paid to be playing this. Got it. Now to find out what's up there. Ooh, okay, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I should be paid to make walks. Oh man, look at that sparkly eyes. The game really looks great. I'm. I might not even be on the highest graphics. I think I'm on high, but you can actually turn it even higher. I should actually show you the PC options. You can see you've got a very nice selection. Let's see, we've got... Yeah, we've got pr very high. Oh, and it seems to change instantly. That's pretty nice. But uh, I'm going to keep it down on high because my, my computer isn't part of NASA's network. So, uh, you know, I don't want to over <laughs> overheat it. Are these ores? Yes, they are. They are ores from this ship. 
Wow. <laughs> Never thought I'd see a frozen ship in the middle of a cave in the wall. Uh, oh, I thought... Okay. Never mind. I thought I saw a floating bathtub, but... That's not something you'd expect. But then again, you wouldn't expect to see a ship, right? So, you never know. Floating bathtub. Is that, can I pick that up? Yeah, I can. Look at That's, all this. Oh, man, it's pretty nice. Why were they carrying so much wealth with them? I don't know. Maybe they wanted to be rich. <gasps> Got a map here. I'm cracking jokes, by the way, but the game is very nicely written. Secrets revealed. There you go. So, new document and mural locations revealed. Uh, so I can check the map. I told you there's some objects you can grab and then it'll reveal other objects on the screen. So you can see your challenge tomb. Explore to find the entrance. I really want to do that, but um, I've showed you quite a lot of platforming and exploration already. I want to show you the combat because the stealth is much better now. Like I said earlier, uh, much more enjoyable. I'm going to skip this poor guy talking. I, I know, I know, you probably did it very well. Uh, what did I want to say? Oh, also, languages is a thing. You can actually level up Lara Croft's uh, language skill. Um, by reading specific murals and different, I don't know, just different objects and artifacts that you find and then it'll upgrade her uh, ability to speak Greek, for example. It'll say, level 2 Greek! <laughs> and uh, you can read Greek wall writing. Although so far, I actually live in Cyprus, so I understand Greek. Uh, so far, the Greek doesn't look like real Greek, but maybe it's just ancient Greek? I don't know, because that was different. Come on, touch it. Yeah, it's real. It's... Oh. There you go, I think I can read this. This codex details the archery techniques of the foes of the Byzantine Empire. Oh, cool. So did I learn something new? Yep, there you go. Quickly shoot up to two successive arrows without the delay of redrawing from the quiver. Rapid fire, arouse, arouse, oh, arouse. I read it twice. Arrows by quickly pressing and releasing RT or... Oh, it doesn't change on the screen while I'm, uh, while I'm changing on the fly. I wanted to see the PC control. Probably left click. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, I think that's how it was in the first game anyway. Oh, someone put a very convenient zipline from here. Thank you very much. Whoa! Man, I just love the feel of this. I mean, oh! If, uh, if you really liked the, the way you kind of get beat up in the first game, just constantly there's traps or just sliding or things are exploding. The enamel work is beautiful. Then uh, you'll be happy to hear that this game is like this. And also, again, you get this kind of rotating artifact thing. And if you find uh, the secret hidden information somewhere, she'll say something more about it. This portrait has been defaced. It looks like it was depicting the prophet. They must have had to hide their faith. Well, that sucks. I'm sorry. I, I wish... I, I hope... I don't wish that upon anyone. I want everyone to be able to... Okay, I'm done talking. Uh, where was I going? There was a secret tomb here. Oh, okay, I think... Oh, right, that was the entrance to this tomb. As you can see, it's grayed out now. Uh, items do that. I kind of would have preferred if it didn't become grayed out, if it just disappeared off the map, because I don't need to remember that there was something there. But I don't know. Maybe there's a use for it that I can't think of at the moment. But I do want to kill some bad guys. So I'd like to see that soon, just to show you a bit. Maybe I'll cut until I find some guys so I can show you. If this goes on too long. Man, this is really nice. If only this stupid commentator wasn't talking so much, you'd be able to just let it sink in. Alright, so although the stealth kind of existed in the first game, I feel like it's just been built upon in the second game. Uh, there, I feel like there's just more, uh, I don't know, vertical stealth. Uh, so you can see here, the game's actually telling me this right now. Uh, when I use this combat instinct mode, enemies hide in yellow is just their normal, but the ones hide in red means they're being watched. Uh, so that's just kind of a small nice detail. You can also do this, where you can distract guys by throwing bottles around. And uh, they'll do that. <laughs> the crates in their hands will explode, and then they'll go investigate. Uh, you can also scramble between bushes. It's just kind of, I don't know. And you can also climb on trees and hide on branches above enemies, Assassin's Creed style. It's just kind of nice. Uh, and also, depending on how long you hold the bow and uh, charge the arrow, it'll be silent or stro strong or whatever, stuff like that. I just, I like that you have a bit of choice when it comes to stealth. Hopefully no one's watching. Alright. Nice. I can also throw this lantern if I want to burn people and uh, be a bit loud, but I don't want to do that right now. I also don't want to waste that arrow. Uh, I, d I just do like that you have choice in this game, kind of. Uh, you can also get perks. I mean, they kind of give a bit of diversity to the combat, like... Uh, I can also get a perk which allows me to have a small percentage of recovering an arrow from a dead body if I shoot them with one. Uh, I think that was also in the first game, but I don't know, Just I think perks are nice, they kind of add a, a bit of freshness as you upgrade, you kind of feel like you're getting somewhere, you know. 
Alright, I'm gonna strangle you with the boat. Mm, come on. I just die faster already, jeez. I actually want to really quickly show you this mode. It's called Expeditions. Instead of the multiplayer mode that the first game had, you can actually challenge your friends and other people in different sorts of uh, trials and stuff, or different tombs. So you can actually replay different chapters in the game and uh, select difficulties, whatever, do score attacks, so you have to collect those wisps, you shoot lanterns, as you can see in the bottom there. Uh, but the thing that kind of spices it up is uh, as you play the game, you get credits, and as you complete these challenges, you get credits, and with those credits, you can buy some card packs here. And uh, so, for example, this gold pack has guarantees rarer cards and all that. So uh, within these cards, you can also just unlock these by uh, getting by playing the game normally. By the way, rest assured, I don't think you can buy these with real money in any way. I don't think there's any sort of microtransaction. This is just kind of an in-game thing. So here we can see, for example, card pack awarded with sparrow pack. And okay, this is just one I got with DLC. Here, this one. Okay, they're both DLC. <laughs> Um, for pre-ordering the game. Alright, whatever. Anyway, you open a pack and you can just reveal them like this. Bam, whatever. I can just flip all of them. Uh, so you can see here, for example, this one. Uh, okay, so this 15% minus over here, it actually will reduce my score because it most likely makes my game, my life a bit easier. Let's read what it does. Gain bonus special ammo with headshot kills. So, or for example, this one. Grants unlimited fire arrows. I like that you actually have that option even though it will lower your score just if you want to go crazy and just kind of unlimited fire arrows. I can also sell it here for credits if I'm not going to use it. Uh, none of them here actually increase my score. Uh, <laughs> let's go, I got another one earlier actually. Let me just go to one of those challenges and I can show you. Um, so there's some other ones which for example allow, say like you can't heal or you can't die once or else you fail. Or uh, you can only heal by stealth killing guys. So let me just select this one as it is. And then here you go, you've got some challenges. Alright, whatever, I'm just gonna stick with these challenges. Continue. And then you've got some cards. I'm gonna use the mouse because it's way easier to navigate. Alright, and here you can see you've got, for example, player weakening tab with all the player weakening cards. And this one will multiply your score by 100%. Uh, health regeneration disabled, use bandages to heal, for example. You've also got other ones which you can change your costume. I don't know why you'd waste a card slot there. The gold ones, by the way, the, the silver ones will actually be spent. After you use them once, they'll be gone. And uh, the gold ones are permanent. So yeah, anyway, that's just kind of a small challenge thing, I guess, to keep you playing after you 100% the campaign. You can kind of replay these and fight against your friends and then lose your friends because you beat their score and stuff like that. Alright, thank you for watching, everybody. Ooh, I'm just going to take this drink with me. <laughs> I'm just going to climb around with this. Uh, thank you for watching. Check out the link in the description to buy the game on Steam if you do like the look of it. It's uh, it's basically more of the same. If you enjoyed the first game or any other Tomb Raider games or Uncharted or stuff like this, where it's like third-person adventure, cover combat kind of stuff, uh, then this is just more of it. It just builds upon everything in the first game. Don't expect something that's that different because it's not. Let's not lie to ourselves. But it's a very fun game overall anyway. And uh, it looks gorgeous. It sounds great. And uh, so, so far the story is pretty interesting as well. And yeah, that's about it. Please like and share the video as well if you enjoyed it. It'll help me out a lot. Until next time, goodbye! Love you! Oh my bottle!